Hello and welcome Hi, to EFAP Mini Episode Thing for the Marvels, Episode 257. Oh, wow. The Marvels. Classic oh, film that really just blew audiences away, right? Like, wow. Mm -hmm. e it is the film that changed Marvel forever, in a sense. Yes. Yeah, that is true. It, it, it forced a lot of people to be like, okay, so Marvel's not doing so great. Mm, right, a little mm -hmm. bit. Yeah, mm -hmm. oh, okay. But, uh, you know. We'll, we'll see how that progresses over time. Uh, we're going to answer some of the questions and, and messages you guys sent in. It's going to be wonderful. See what see what you're up to. See what, see what you have to say. Starting with, just as South Park said, he fat put a chick in it and made it late and gay. Lame and gay. Unless they're talking about us being late. We might have been. We might have been a little late. I don't Jeez. know. Was Fringy late that day? Oh, uh, I, so. I don't think so. No. Maybe we, because they said put a chick in it. We, we had nuts for that episode, I think, as well, so... I guess we South Parked ourselves. Nuts a hype, nuts a hype, nuts a hype. Yeah. The, there was like a there was like a meme about the the EFAP we did on uh the the Nando versus movies one where we barely started that one a little bit after one and people the people were already making memes like is there not an EFAP today? Well like, to be... chill guys, calm down. <laughs> I mean sometimes there is a lot of like yeah, we, we we just we don't do the thing that everyone wants us to do, which is to put the um the thing up ahead of time. I just, just, just something I just didn't have, make a habit of doing, but every other stream in our sphere does it. The like, this stream will start in five hours, that sort of thing. Uh, this one's for the real fans. I'll just starts up when we're already talking. It's, it's, a, uh, it's a nightmare to follow as a fan, but in a way, it's quite serene because we're just we're always there, always talking, talking about everything. Um, know that you, along with all sentient beings, are loved. Okay. Oh, thanks. All right. uh, imagine Mola saying, "Rags, orange dog magic." And then I, and then I just do it. And you actually did do some orange just do it. dog magic. Yeah. Pretty cool. What What do you think orange dog magic? What like I guess what do you think the variable of orange and dog would mean uh, on someone's sort of base understanding of magic? What do you think it would look like? Um. I'm not sure because if we go by if we go by the logic like the show presented that maybe there's like is there white girl magic? Is there Asian girl magic? Oh well I, I just meant like what do you so imagine dogs, you know a dog's kind of magic would look like? What would a dog want to do with magic? Like make infinite, I don't know, bones or something? Maybe. Uh something probably something about that uh satisfying the you know their simple the, the simple Maybe pleasures a sentient in life all like a sentient tennis ball that they can play catch with forever but they like just power. have more dogs be around um mm. you know um and if it's an it's, orange dog form of magic then the tennis ball is just orange and then we have satisfied all the variables Maybe they just uh, whenever they're whenever they're lonely or whenever they're they just want to take a nap they can just I don't know. They just use magic to make those things happen. I imagine it's not going to be very complex, you know, because no, they're not into like super complex stuff. It's the simple things in life that they enjoy. I imagine with like it, with cats, it'd probably be the same way. Like they could just conjure sunbeams through the window, or conjure a bowl of yawn that never yeah, learns out. Tuna. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. With all these multiverse shit going on, I for one can't wait for Goku to show up. You don't want him what to about, show up in the MCU. You don't want him. Just finished what watching about the what? Kermit the Frog. It's what right. about he could What about the Muppets? The it would, it would yeah. probably be a good movie, but it wouldn't do shit for the MCU. Especially, you know, it would be a good movie if they had control over it. The Muppets side would, of things. The Muppets yeah. had creative yeah. control. You got Kermit in the writer's room. Yeah. And he's just like, I've just, I've just been checking your script, and it doesn't, doesn't make a lot of sense. I used to, he's saying redraft might be the way to go here. <laughs> you and I just want to see him with have like, a script. Um... He's, he's trying to nervously find out what the most polite way of saying the script is utter, worthless shit. Yeah. Or but you just have him, he wants you know, to be nice. He's in the writer's room and they're pitching their idea and he's just kind of sitting there with his hand on his chin, just like... Mm, 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 mm. All your ideas are terrible. <laughs> Kermit, he's like, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't mean to be mean, I'm just... It's just not a very good script, you know? 
Just finished watching Anastasia on y'all's recommendation. Good film. Also, Fringy, yes, if sir. you don't want yeah. people to think you're a bird, maybe don't make turkey gobbling sounds at the end of every episode. Hmm, that's good. Is that, is, that a, is that a turkey gobble sound? Kind of. Um, I guess... Hmm, I'm trying to think of what other animal I would pick above it being a, a turkey sound. Malignant. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know because it's <laughs> the little floopy noises that were in the background. <laughs> oh damn! I don't even remember those noises. I, I don't remember much about that film. Well, that's I that's the origin of that noise. Sort of do, yeah. It's the it was, I, she wasn't I making those were... noises. I was just saying that she made those noises in the Fat movie. <laughs> yeah, we're just endowing her with those noises. <laughs> like you'd see her briefly like running around, you'd be like. Bloop, 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 bloop. <laughs> <laughs> Four years ago, Mola, you said it would be so hard to destroy the MCU, it would take 20 bad films in a row. Well, 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 how the turntables. Why do people keep saying that as though I wasn't correct? The table didn't turn. They went and did that. They made <laughs> about a dozen terrible films and shows. I, I say, like, it, it, would, it wouldn't happen because of how insane they'd have to be in terms of hyper-incompetence. It's like, well, what if they did, though? It's like, well, then what I said would happen would happen. Well, I, I feel it's 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 worth emphasizing that it really is unprecedented and insane how consistently bad those films were. You know, like it's not I'm not exaggerating when I say that they they like all bad, except for basically one. That they're all really, really, really bad. It's so annoying because it sounds hyperbolic, but it's just yeah. descriptive. It's just descriptive. <laughs> Been one hour of the killer so far, and I'm confident it's better than the entirety of the Marvels. I'm going out golfing. Enjoy the misery. You're gonna have to finish the killer to be sure, right? You gotta do it. Mm -hmm. You gotta. It'll never sure. get. It doesn't get to the Marvels peaks, mm. though. I mean, mm. it, it's all right, but the Marvels really. It just has a certain, a certain. I don't know what. Well, something that's uh, a one... bit awkward about the killer. There's no multiverse. I don't, I don't think anyway. No multiverse. No mm. space the cat. Film, the film no ended. black girl magic. The film should have ended with an alternate version of Michael Fassbender coming through a portal saying, "I need your help to do some killing." Wait, you didn't kill? You didn't? <laughs> you, you didn't shoot the guy through the window in this universe? Oh my god! <laughs> you destroyed oh, no. everything. It would be Michael Fassbender, but his multiversal self would be a lady assassin, and she yeah. wouldn't have missed. No, and and she would have done it really, really good. The Killers. Ooh. Ooh, yeah, mm -hmm. like the band. Just pointing out, if you read the credits, it cites not one, but one science advisor. Why'd you say that? <laughs> not one, but one. Uh, they probably will essential, sell essential oil candles. That would have been a funny job, science advisor. I guess uh, that's that's funny that there's a science advisor who was involved and got credited, but the original creators of any of the characters that were featured in the film don't get any credit at all. How it's do you know, weird. Fringy, that they didn't ask not to be credited at this point because it's too embarrassing? You don't know. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's, that's entirely possible, but I, I don't know exactly when they started just saying based on the Marvel comics. But they did start doing that when they used to actually credit the original creators of the characters in the film. It makes it's like they're it's almost like they're um, I think they're doing it because it looks better in their eyes to say, yeah, this is based off of our characters. This is based, based on characters off we Marvel own. Comics rather than you know based yeah. on Captain America, written or created by the writer and the artist. Yeah, I guess so. I that's, I hope that DC actually keeps doing that. It's it bugs me a bit that. The, that they're just like, ah, fuck it, based on the Marvel comics, not based yeah. on characters that were created by people. <laughs> you know, it's just like, yeah, it was, they're ours, they're ours, all right? We made them, they're ours. Hey, Massives, DVD has recently added Chucky from Child's Play as a killer. Thoughts on DVD and their many collabs with other IPs? I guess that's just for me. Uh, yeah, I suppose so. You're the only one who plays it, I, I think. Uh, I, I enjoy the ones that they obviously, like, you know, respect where it came from and try to mechanically manipulate them into being something that would satisfy the fans of that franchise. While if they can get, like, original voice actors or sound effects or tracks that all relate to it, like, take advantage of that IP collaboration and make it so that the fact that you don't get to have a game all about them, but instead play as them in Dead by Daylight, that hopefully you can flesh it out enough that it feels worthwhile. Um, I guess the counter comparison could be something like Fortnite. Where you see, you know, John Wick, Darth Vader, Peter Griffin, and Optimus Prime, and they're all just like running with a gun, and you're just like, because mm. a friend of mine kind of hated all collaborations, even like the Dead by Daylight ones, 
definitely in the position of saying like it's just it's all gross and corporate and slimy and sloppy and trying to sell you on everything by using like the recognizable things but not like the substance of the thing i'm a little bit more lenient but fortnite is something that does feel like a, a swamp of like if your IP, your ip is like destined to end up there you know it seems that way with stuff like, I mean, and even Call of Duty is now doing it, right? Like these crossovers with Dune or the boys and everything, just throwing yeah. them in there. Because that's a way to sell your game and to get people to buy into battle passes and stuff is by tying it into other IPs that they may like. But, I mean, the cost of all of this is that in terms of a cohesive sort of art style, it seems like Fortnite can kind of get away with it a bit more. Like that that's it's almost like that's what its identity has become is a whole bunch of different characters from different yeah. series, but through it's the aesthetic Fortnite is style, now matching aesthetic. Compared to something like Call of Duty where it's like, you know, this is still kind of trying to be a military shooter, but you've just got like fucking Homelander running around and yeah, yeah, with yeah, a rifle. Pink guns. Mm-hmm. Ugh. I hate it. And it's just I it's just it. could you imagine if you were playing World at War oh, and you just God. had like fucking Homelander running around there, like <sighs> that just doesn't it just sound miserable? Yes, and it does. It that's does what I mean. Like if if you you know thoroughly enjoyed and were engaged with World at War, and then you go, Reznov's going to be in Fortnite. We're like, mm. why would that? Be, why would that mean anything? You know? <laughs> like, okay, man, great. I'm very thankful that Reznov is in Fortnite. Mm. Also play Little Nightmares, High Rags, Mubles, and of course, Fringold. Hey! Oh yeah, thinking... so the person corrected themselves. They said they, they meant to say not one, but two science advisors. So they had two science advisors on the marbles. Interesting. Oh, right, okay. For their science. Even... Yes, for their Is very meme scientifically from... accurate Rick film. Morty? Meme from Mad Magic, Mad 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 Marriage Story, where they're on set, and there's a guy who says he's the... Uh... The expert, I can't remember what it's an expert in now, but he says he's an expert in something, and then they say, so how's the film doing? Like, is it accurate? And he just went, no. It's like, <laughs> yeah, okay. So he's just there to just be there. Which is unfortunate, but it doesn't surprise me. Um, you need a pretty high cue to understand the science of the Marvels. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. This one just says eviscerations. Eviscerations, no breathing. Yeah. Planning Maybe they're your eviscerating the, the lore of the comic book characters. They've eviscerated it. They've cut it to ribbons. Planning on sharing your thoughts on Pandaverse. Also, hi, Fringy. I hey. thought it was really funny. It's a funny special. Yeah, it was funny. It's I weird. Wish, when, uh, they would do when, more. You say, when you say Pandaverse with your accent, I almost think of like Kung Fu Panda in a cinematic <laughs> universe. <laughs> Now they have the panda verse is like oh okay well yeah I, I, I guess that would be interesting I guess it yeah, yeah. Watch well that. and we do have a new that. entry in the panda verse in right Kung Fu panda or Ooh. coming out yeah. this year hopefully That's it's right. not cringe it it will be cringe Aquafina will uh, be the new dragon warrior is it so much stuff I guess people really in, enjoy her. It, it gives me the vibes of something you're trying to force, like they're forcing her to be a thing. I don't know. Like, top-down culture. I don't know. What, do you think like, she hasn't earned her position, that people don't love her? I No, she, people do love her. I love her. Aww. She is my she is McQueen. McQueen! <laughs> but, but yes, uh, with South Park, I wish they would continue the storyline. I think they could build out a really fun whole season with that as like the backdrop, all this multiverse and pandery stuff. Because there's so much to tackle, and it's become so culturally relevant to talk about. And uh, so many Multiversal different companies. Multiversal elements of all the characters. Yeah, and they have, they have every right to bring in what and ifs. make fun of loads of characters. And they did it. It's crazy. They made fun of Spielberg and Lucas for raping Indiana Jones for Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Oh, I f man. You know? <laughs> Hard to believe that there would come a time when... I remember, they were also worse. making fun of... Uh, they were making fun of them for, like, all of the, the HD... Like, the, the special effects that they were injecting into the old uh, films. Do you remember? Do you remember that episode? It was the one where they, they yeah. played their new version of Raiders of the Lost Ark that they had remade, and then it was the Ark of the Covenant. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, did they do that? Is that based on a real thing where they did new versions of the old movies and added like special effects and stuff? Well, you know about Star Wars, obviously. But... Star, yeah, I know so about the, Star Wars. The, I did, the I South Park episode. Did that with... well, so that was what it started with. It was like the boys go to the movies 
and then it's like, oh, Saving Private Ryan, except they're all, their guns are replaced with walkie-talkies. And so you've just got all the soldiers on the beach shooting with walkie-talkies, and then, you know, like, remake of Star Wars, and but, like, more Ewoks and everything. This was back in the early 2000s. And so, like, the whole uh -huh. episode was, um... The whole episode basically turned into Raiders of the Lost Ark, with the idea being that the Ark of the Covenant was Spielberg and Lucas wanting to remake Raiders of the Lost Ark, an idea that was absurd to the boys, which is, again, it's crazy that that was back in the early 2000s and everything's gotten dramatically worse, worse <laughs> on that front. If the novelization of a much better sequel trilogy from another universe was available, would you read them into dimensional reading? Uh, would I read, like, a really great sequel trilogy novelization? Yeah. Um, probably not. Probably just, not. Uh, on account of oh. it being a book. Well, oh, I was wait, just gonna uh, say, on account okay, of the so... fact that, like, it's... I could... There are fanfics of a really good sequel trilogy that exist in our world. Uh, well, yeah, but I mean, I don't know. Like, this... It sounds like really good. Like, a really, really, really good, like, sequel yeah, trilogy from another really universe. Really good. This one's, this one's really I, I good. I presume when they say a good... I, I, I presume they don't mean, well, it's got nice prose, but it's the same plot. I presume they mean that it's, like, a rewritten sequel trilogy. You can read it again if you want. They said a novelization of a much better sequel trilogy. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'd probably read that. Yeah, probably not. If Fringy told me that I should read it after reading it, then yeah, sure. Yeah, maybe. That would definitely increase it in my estimation. The fact that it's from another universe, uh, it wouldn't like that doesn't add or take away from anything. Uh, I feel like if I read a thing and it's like, you know, if we watched Lord of the Rings and then I said this is actually from a different universe, I I think I'd just be sad. <laughs> I'd be like, yeah, why? What would make you so sad about it? That it's not from ours. Yeah, but it's from a world. You know? Yeah, but if I've already accepted the fact that infinite possibilities are all out there, then I just... <laughs> it's like, so we just didn't, we didn't get, get the one that was one. cool. Okay. I was, well, I, but I've said it so many times. The one that was I cool. consider us, like, almost cosmically lucky that we got... that. These this universes with shit Peter Jack's Lord of the Rings are like, I wish we had the universe that had the good Lord of the Rings and we're sitting here like... Ah. That's, that's true. That's true. But then they're also sitting there being like... Wow, isn't it great that all of our franchises are, are fine except maybe one? And we're just like, hmm, funny. On a scale of 1 to 10, how likely do you think we will have at least one more great Star Wars movie in the theaters before we all turn 80? Their guess is 30% likely. I mean... Oh, by the time we all I mean, turn 80, I mean, it's gotta be that's, good, right? That's, that's, yeah, that's a that's, long time. I feel like that's, that's 100%. Yeah, that's, a like, yeah, that's like 50 gotta years. Get so. one. Uh, it's gotta be. We're gonna it's gotta one. be one. Because who one. knows? Who be knows one. what things look like in twenty, thirty years from now? You know, with even the, like with long the, once, um, starts to kick in. I don't know. Once once the copyright is done on Star Wars, can we get someone maybe making something that's uh, not Korean? That would be within eight years, right? Um. Yes. Wait. I don't know. It depends. What? Because Mickey Mouse was like that. That took a hundred years. That ended up taking. Well, but it, would uh, the cover of Star Wars be started in, what, 77? I guess it's possible then. Yeah? We'll see. But, yeah, I'm hoping we can get at least one good like, movie. that's where yeah, mine sure. goes to. Hey, Mandalorian like, and well, Grogu, man. the copyright run out? Mandalorian and Grogu. That's oh, the be Mando awesome. movie by Jon Favreau. Oh, yeah. Grogu will be an infant forever. Oh, yeah. That'll be good. I'm all a rags and guests. Hello. Hi. Hey. I'm writing a story about a firefighter turned superhero. Would it be okay for me to use EFAP characters slash law as side characters? Go ahead, yeah. Well, from, from Yeah, me anyway. why not? Yeah, just make us look flattering and handsome and intelligent <laughs> and well-endowed and, you know, then you'll be good to go. I don't mind being an Eldritch Horror in the story if you want. That's fine. Yeah. Make us, uh, make us lovable. Make us lovable Eldritch Lovable Eldritch, Eldritch Horror, yeah. We gotta uh, correct the stereotype. I hope at some point down the line, Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga gets a movie adaptation of sorts. I've heard that the Mario and Luigi like uh, RPGs are really good and funny. That's what I've heard about them. They're really funny. I know nothing about them. I think they're the reason why Paper Mario is no longer an RPG is because those exist. And so Nintendo's thinking was, well, we've got an RPG series for Mario, so let's do... Paper stuff with Paper Mario, which is not what people want. Because <laughs> that's what they've done. Like, they did the sticker game, and then they had, like, an origami one. And all I see from... Because I haven't played any of the Paper Mario games. I will, though, eventually. Um, 
is that everybody just liked Thousand Year Door and the first Paper Mario because they were really cool RPGs with, like, paper as kind of a fun aesthetic rather than everything being about arts and crafts as a premise to the exclusion of, of like, uh, an overarching narrative with characters. Hmm. That's what I've heard, anyway. Uh, why did they do the memory store again? Also, high, uh, well, high in general. Why? Uh, well, because the I memory guess store Dr. is... Marvel had a memory machine in the first film. Because it's a terrible writer. Kind of like, get out of jail free card for anything. It's pretty like much, your, pretty much. It's your magic power to do whatever you want, whenever you need it. So whenever you need to be like, oh, we got to have a plot thing happen for this is a quick memory store a headset, except they just made it portable. They just made a portable memory store. Yeah, she can use it. Well, and to just be honest with you, once again, amazing technology that needs to be shared with Earth, but won't be. Like, uh, think of the applications for it. It can access every one of your, <laughs> your, your, your history, like a movie. Yeah. It, would, it would change everything. Like, I'm not even kidding. All industries. Alone. Yeah, it would be insane. But let's never think about any of that. Nope, because if we make the world what it should be, then we have to, we can't just shoot in a, the, the, just can't shoot the world as it is with our cameras. We would have to do a bunch of whole shit to it, and that would be even more expensive. Uh, Popple the Shadow it. Thief is one of my favorite Mario characters. Look that boy up. He's great, see? I'm guessing he's a character from the Mario Luigi games. I guess so. Let's have a little look-see. Hmm. Popple? The Shadow Thief. So I guess he steals shadows. <laughs> oh my goodness. Look at that grin. <laughs> God, he just loves stealing shadows. He loves stealing. Yeah, he's like Steely. He's definitely having fun. <laughs> him and Peter Pan getting to scraps, I bet. <laughs> Look at him! Look at him grin! Uh, KK was butt hit by Pandaverse, tee hee. She probably didn't appreciate it, but the, the wise mm. way forward is what they do with a lot of stuff, which is probably just yep, never acknowledge it. Move yeah. on. Yeah, I'm sure that sort of thing gets around. South Park is too big to ignore. Uh, you also have to take into account, into account there was no... Thursday preview for Incredible Hulk that didn't exist in 2008. Oh, in terms of the box office on opening? Well, uh, obviously, now we're at the point where it doesn't even matter. It is the lowest grossing MCU film, lower than Incredible Hulk. And of course, that's not even adjusting for inflation. It, uh, <laughs> it's a, it was a disaster. It's the first... It, Ant-Man did not make its money back, but the Marvels was like a dramatic flop. Uh, hi, I'm gay actor Michael Douglas, and I don't hi. like how Nintendo is trying to remove the 93 movie off streaming. Preservation of art, what's that? Oh, it deserves its place there, absolutely. I'm guessing yeah. they don't yeah. want people like, let's watch the Mario movie. Oh, yeah, Super what? Mario. This is it? Oh my god, why did they make it like this? <laughs> like is this the Mario all? movie? Shut up, honey, I bought you the Mario movie from the guy. Yeah, the guy in the alley behind Target is selling me the Mario movie. <laughs> There's a box set, 4K restoration of the 93 Mario movie that's being sold in Australia. Trust the fungus. Ooh, yeah. We will sure do an EFAT movies yeah. on it eventually. Happen. Because, Fring, you've not seen I've, it, right? I've not, not seen I'm not. the original that's Mario be wonderful. movie, no. <laughs> We can watch it back to back with your fucking with the new, with Wizard of Oz one. movie. No, no, He's no, that'll be a separate shit. thing. That, that, that would, if anything, that teams up with, you know, the original uh, Oz. Cause, cause Oz? And then Oz the Great and Powerful. We could. Because, yeah, Return to Oz is just one of the... To be fair, that should probably be in a the thing where the three of us pick our, like, scariest child films, if you know what I mean. <laughs> oh, yeah, I've already got mine picked out. Yeah. What is yours? Uh, Little Nemo, Adventures in Slumberland. You, do you know what yours would be? I actually don't know off the top of my head what I would pick. Well, I have to think about that. Uh, I have better legs than this movie, and I'm wheelchair bound. Oof. Or Marvels. Maybe I'll get a membership after another 1,000 super chats. Hey, you know, whatever you want to do. If you want to do a membership, if you want to do super chats, if you want to do neither, it's chat, okay. It's all right. Every Appreciate super chat it. brings us closer. Kevin fatigue and Dave fail only leading the way. Wait, leading the way. Yeah, I mean, Kevin fail only. And fail <laughs> fatigue Filoni only. 
is basically okay, like in charge of Star Wars as it is right now. It's just like, yep, that's doomed. Yeah. Good luck with that. Yeah, absolutely doomed. It sucks to hear people celebrate on Twitter when like the news comes out. Like, well, yeah, Star Wars is saved. We got Filoni. Let now. him uh, just let him see what happens. That's, that's all. I, I I don't think we have any reason to think that he's going to generate uh, anything close to what like you know OT era prequel era even uh, we, we're gonna get ahsoka's that's that's his thing that's what he knows how to do apparently yeah he's got his action figures and he's gonna smash them together and then he's gonna look off into the distance without saying anything for of, extended periods of time of main villains lose and then say nah actually this was good yeah i know what i'm doing yeah and we're spend good. the rest of the time doing nothing you guys just be hating because strong women some disney shills probably i honestly can't believe there are people who like these superhero movies well, there's plenty of people who just want to be in the vibe of enjoying the action movie that comes out. They just want to be like, yeah, fun, fun, fun. And then they're like, oh shit, people don't like this anymore? And it's like, no. And I feel yeah, like they was... are people who would also shift with enough of their friends uh, not enjoying it, you know? They'd be like, yeah, actually this is shit, true. And they'd enjoy shitting on it then, you know? That was kind of the way that I was before TLJ, before EFAP and everything got started. I was like super, just go to the movies, have a good time, look at the lights... Uh, then go back home and carry on with your life. And then, you know, the TLJ broke my neurons, so <laughs> here we are. Every time I hear about Monica Rambeau, I turn into that meme of Snoop Dogg shouting, Who? Yeah, well, Monica yeah. I mean, Rambeau. It's, it's hard to know who the fuck she is. We don't even know who she is now. No, she's barely a character. Oh, yeah. Is she, uh... Do you think she is going to be an Avenger? Uh, probably. She'll show up in it, but I imagine she won't get that much, like, screen time. Yeah, unlike, I, um, I, Gaia, she will definitely come back. Gaia, yeah. like, I don't even know what's happening with her. I I'm don't think they're that. gonna do anything with yeah, Gaia. I don't know. I, th I think they might be, uh... You know, as I, I say, think me, me if they bring her back, they're not gonna... there'll be a throwaway line that says that the Super Scroll stuff wore out <laughs> so then they'll have to find some way they'll to... They'll probably just won't say anything. I think they'll just uh, not... I, I don't know. I think that you can't ignore that. That was the kind of thing that everybody who saw it was like, oh, so she's the most powerful character in the MCU. That's why just rando. I think... Well, you and I are going in different directions, because I think that's why they're going to ignore it. How do they ignore it? What do you mean? Like, she just doesn't to... have any powers and they don't say anything? She... No, I mean, like, she never shows up again. We never see her. Oh, that's I'm, a saying, possible, yeah. I'm saying if she shows up again, oh, they will she have a throwaway up... line. But she might not they, show up. I totally agree with that. She might well, just that might just be it. They might do just the unspoken nerf like they did with Captain Marvel in the Marvels, you know, where she uh, should be instantly winning every fight all the time with no issues whatsoever. What they'll do is if they have her, she'll be using her powers like swapping between powers, but they're not going to be nearly as effective as they should mm, be. That's it'll be like that, it'll I be, could see that I could see it'll that be like possibly. Suicide Squad where Superman could just kill them all and the Flash could just kill them all all the time, but but they but he just doesn't and we just don't talk uh, about it. Yeah, I I could buy that. Um, I guess in terms of the idea of like, well, which characters are gonna be in an Avengers movie and get the most screen time? It's like, well, the characters who probably get the most screen time would be like Benedict Cumberbatch, Doctor Strange, Captain Falcon probably get a decent amount of screen time. Uh, but then when you start to get to more, like, your secondary or tertiary characters, they're going to be fighting for a couple of minutes, I imagine. You know? Hi, Rex. Hello. Uh, if you added too much matter and atmosphere to a planet, would that increase the mass and affect the orbit of the planet? Same for the decrease, Hi, Rex. Uh, uh, technically, I, but probably not enough to... Well, I don't think it would be enough to just match the size right? of the planet, you know? Like... What is the, the weight of all of the thicker. ocean? Well, I guess I'm I'm just saying like relatively, you know, how much does all of the water on Earth weigh compared to the mass of the Earth? I imagine it's very, very, very low by comparison. Yeah, I think that what considering the crust of Earth is just not just like the I, crust, you know, the crust, the mantle. Um, well, I'm saying in reference to the whole mass of the Earth, the crust and what we're used to is such a tiny little you know, yeah. part of it. And it's, when you start getting tiny. into adding atmosphere to a planet, like how much mass do you really add to a planet by giving it a lot more atmosphere? Like it's not nothing, but compared to what it already has in terms of being, <laughs> you know, molten solid iron and rock and all that stuff, it, 
can't be that but much. well maybe I, I'm I mean totally if, off, but. if you want to get to the real science stuff why wouldn't the atmosphere just escape out of the atmosphere you know like why would it like just because you uh, if you dropped a bunch of air on mercury why would it stay there why wouldn't it just disperse into space yeah there's only you'd probably get a little bit thicker of an atmosphere but there's probably a cap for how much atmosphere a a planet can hold in because of its mass like, Earth can only keep enough atmosphere close enough to itself before it starts to drift away. Well, it's, it's, there, is no, there is no clear line between where the atmosphere ends. It just gets thinner until you're in space. It's, yeah, it's we, not like there's a line where you'd be line, like, oh, well, yeah, but... there's the atmosphere. It ends here and space begins there. We can approximate that, but the atmosphere just gets thinner and thinner and thinner. Yeah, I think we... I think we don't we measure atmospheric pressure in Tor or something like that? But um... I... I, I don't know. Isn't it one at ATM? Like, isn't that the, the unit of measurement? So, like, oh, one Oh, that's an automatic ATM. teller machine. That's a totally different thing. But, uh, oh. the, but I don't know what the, the, the official arbitrary but agreed upon line of this is where space begins. Isn't it like 100 Earth kilometers? Isn't that something? I think something it like? is. I think it yeah. is 100 kilometers. Um, but maybe I'm off and it's... Yeah, I, I, but, I'm I mean, not exactly sure. But, but hey, you know, the Marvels is not a science They had lesson. two science advisors? What do you mean? <laughs> yeah, Fringy, they had two science advisors. Yeah, I'm sure that the Force it's Awakens science had movie. a science advisor. It's still not a science lesson. <laughs> JJ yeah, said so. The unvisor. <laughs> the unvisor. He, whatever they said is this too scientific. He said, yes, don't do that. They had the guy They had the high, The guy who said the hyperspace kamikaze was A-OK. -okay. They had, had that guy. They brought him back. And they're like, yeah, sure, do it. Whatever. Pretty sure it was Pablo Hidalgo who said that was fine on the story team. Anyway, um, the that Loki explanation of him becoming Yggdrasil contradicts Thor's explanation in the first Thor. It's nonsense. So when <laughs> the end of season two happens, which you guys will get to or have gotten to probably, uh, the the, uh, the from, from our coverage, I mean the nature of him becoming the god of stories and Yggdrasil being some kind of like he's like the grand controller of all of the universe and all of time now. It's like, see, that's kind of Norse-ish. And it's just like, you don't even remember. You didn't fucking watch the other films because you're telling your own story. You have no idea what's happening. Like, the fact that they brought a boulder randomly, and it's just like, you, you've you already basically set it in stone that he wasn't in your version. You didn't adapt him. But, mm. like, okay, you're just throwing it in now because you're like, I don't know, he's fucking Norse. Like, I we'll know. make a joke about who even knows who boulder is. It's like, oh, well, just because you forgot to put him in doesn't mean he doesn't exist. Working within what you've already set up, is so much more cool and harder to do and strengthens the entire process compared to well you guys did that can we do this mm. uh, and then i say that and that's already way more you know generous than what they do which is they have no idea what the people did before they don't even ask the question they don't know that there's a question to be asked on whether they can or cannot do something um i want to use an example from buffy uh rags can you mute for like one minute Deafen, I suppose. Yeah, Deafen, yeah. For one, uh, yeah, sure. I'll ping uh, you me... when I'm, it won't take long. And this applies to anyone right. listening who doesn't want any Buffy spoilers. All right, I'm going to go get a drink and pee. That'll work. So, uh, season two, when Angel is supposed to become the bad guy, uh, they, they need, like, what would be called, I guess, a jobber. Someone to keep us busy until he's, he's in. And so they bring in a character called Spike, and they're like, you know, we've got a charismatic actor, this should be good enough. And they introduce him, and it's like, how do we make him seem threatening? It's like, I, let's just say he's killed two Slayers. That's pretty scary. Two, you know, that's more than one. That's not just, like, you know, that's significant, right? It's like, that means he's going to be a super threat. And he is a super threat. He almost beats Buffy in a fight almost straight away. And you have the whole plot line with him um, healing Drusilla, and then they decide to keep him. Then you fast forward three seasons... And Buffy's experiencing an arc in relation to how she's coming to terms with, the, you know, she, she's not invincible. She could die at any moment. And she's got to be really careful. And Spike gives her the huge lesson. The ultimate point being that most Slayers essentially want to die. Because they can't take it for as long. You know, they're only human, right? They can only go on for so long. And eventually they're kind of hoping that this fight will be their last sort of thing. And he teaches her that through fleshing out extensively the two Slayers that he killed. And it's like damn, that was three years ago that you even set that up. And it was set up like, you know, I'm happy to just admit they did it probably pretty casually. They're like, yeah, he killed two Slayers, whatever. That makes him sound scary. But by the time you get through the whole show, it's like a significant portion of his background that uh, helps flesh him out 
almost completely, and then it adds to like another arc. And look what you achieved by using something that already existed. Mm -hmm. You didn't have to go like, fuck it, he killed four slayers at the same time. That's more scary. You should be like, but that's not what we said before. And it's like, oh, that was like three seasons ago. Who's going to remember that? Yeah, nobody will remember. I didn't even remember until you pointed it out. Well, <laughs> you mean like remembering that on his intro? Because that's the oh, thing. No, right? no, no. I, I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm memeing. Like, I'm saying that the writer doesn't even know because I haven't even watched the other stuff. But right. yes, that, like, that is something that was probably thrown in there to just instantly make him seem more intimidating. But then they leveraged it because. Of course, that's what you do. Yeah, you just remember your fucking history. And they do it a lot mm -hmm. as the show goes on, because they're like, oh, we can actually do something with this instead of just ignoring well, it. And, and there's a huge benefit from reviewer side, because if you are there and you remember something that happened like seven, eight years ago from when you were watching it, it is cool to have your uh, having paid attention to the story rewarded by the story. Dude, when... Uh, when... <laughs> okay, never mind. <laughs> I was about to say something else. I was like, no, okay. Um... <laughs> Yeah, so EFAP on my birthday, you're too kind, Mr. Longo. Oh, no problem. We're here for birthdays, okay? It's like Doom Eternal when the corporate tells the scientists to let the demons kill them. Oh, mm. with the cat. Oh, yeah. the cats, right, yeah. Well, yeah, because, I don't know, like, the, these, like, eldritch abominations, maybe, maybe you'd rather risk just dying than being eaten by them. Yeah, nobody has any idea what the fuck is about to happen, but you just have, like, funny... Everything's just funny. That's the vibes. Well, it's just, you know, it's, it's, I mean, I, I wonder how Kamala would have felt if, if it's like, all right, now you're family. Get them eaten. Yeah, and you just be like, how do we know? Eat, eat and it's like, cats. oh, most of the time people seem to be okay. And it's like, but these things have also killed people by eating them, right? I, they absolutely have. It's like, yeah, in the um, first one, so... In the Well, the thing is, is in the first one, the, like, the Tesseract didn't get destroyed, but... You could have just chalked that up to, well, how exactly does he You can't destroy a Tesseract it? with a, with a flurkin. Exactly. So, and all we ever saw was people get eaten and die. But then in this film, they were like, oh, well, they, they get spat up. Which is just some bullshit that they made up for this film because they wanted it for the fight scene and they wanted it for yeah. that Well, they were always in storage in there. They were always just hanging out. Once upon a time, there were three little girls who went to the police academy. Charlie's Angels, proper 70s female representation. Or probably would have been better. I, I never saw the 70s version, but I saw the... Um, I think I saw a few Cameron episodes of the 70s version. Uh, did you ever see the sequel to that one? Yes. Wasn't as good. <laughs> those, were, those were some kind of wacky movies. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Captain Marvel to the Marvels will be the biggest box office drop-off SFOD, a sequel since Alice in Wonderland to Alice Through the Looking Glass. I think it's a worse drop-off than that one, right? I don't see why it wouldn't set the record, but maybe there's one I'm missing. Well, because, I mean, Aquaman ended up making twice as much money as Aquaman 2 ended up mm -hmm. making twice as much money as the Marvels. How much did Alice through in the through the looking glass, not in it, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> Alice, Alice through the looking glass. Because the first one, like, inexplicably made a billion dollars. No, I think I think it's, it's, it is worse than that one, because uh, Alice through the looking glass made 300 million, which... For a hundred seventy-five million dollar budget or a hundred seventy million dollar budget, that is not good enough. But no, that's better yeah, than yeah. two hundred million dollars, and then two hundred million dollars gross profit. Yeah, that's you know, like the depressed spy money, but it's not like panic. Uh, you know, bad. It, it probably was a little bit panic bad because that would have they would have lost money, but they didn't lose as much money. Yeah. So yeah, the Marvels is a bigger box office drop off. I bet this stream makes more of a profit than Disney does off the Marvels. That's true. Oh, as long as we I mean, made even yes. a dollar. Yes, even that's right. Made... <laughs> Every dollar that you give to EFAP, you're sticking it to the mouse. Poor mouse. He's he's pretty much dead. <laughs> Kicking At this him point, up. Mickey Mouse is probably pretty tired. He's like, I just, I just want to retire. <laughs> and then they keep whipping him. It's like, <laughs> no, <laughs> you will work. <laughs> you belong to us. And then as soon as he like becomes mouse public domain, he can escape. Normally. Well, usually that's the way it's presented, is that? But but that's because every yeah, Mickey Mouse is always presented as the evil corporate villain. But maybe he's the victim. Maybe yeah. Nobody maybe ever portrays true. Bugs Bunny as like the evil corporate or the Lord of Warner Brothers. Someone please make this pick a Futa meme. Not sure what the. I don't know if that's gonna happen. Right. Is Black Girl Magic the politically correct term for voodoo? 
Well, it no. is appealing Voodoo. Witch to doctors um, are are men too. The voodoo, you know. Well, uh, cause, cause you have, uh, I can't remember what trope it's called, but isn't it like a mystical black person became like a problematic thing or whatever that the, uh, older movies were, were accused of? And so it's like flipped into, like, cause that, that's what that joke is trying to appeal to, I assume, but I don't, I don't even know. It's kind of confusing. Like, you're a black girl, you do your magic. Like, what? I think, I think it's meant to just be like, oh yeah, you're awesome or something. I think, I think it's meant to be, it's that basic. Okay. Just like, yeah, like, who? I am what like I am. The, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like that. It's not I think like that's Calypso from those. the Pirates movies. I know. I always, I've always kind of enjoyed that sort of trope. The like the, the voodoo priest who could do the spells and the curses, and he has all the bone totems and the fetishes and the, you know, like the really nifty, cool kind of stuff. Um, I've always kind of, I've, I've always liked that as an, and as, as an aesthetic and as a kind of character. Um, like a different take on the, uh, you know, the the more, I guess, the more Western, like, witch in the woods that you maybe make deals with, and I'll give you this in exchange for this, and I'll use the eye of an then she tricks cauldron, you. you know? Yeah, she then she maybe she tricks whatever. you. Maybe, maybe, maybe she does. That's the thing. Sometimes, what a bitch. sometimes they give you exactly what you want, and they make a deal. Like Marie Laveau. Do you know about Marie Laveau? I guess she made a deal with a witch and it worked out. No, Marie Laveau is the witch. See? You don't even know. You don't even know about Marie Laveau. When I said she, I was well, referring to Marie Laveau. Interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. Got ya. Hi, Rex. Hello! Any feelings or thoughts on Darktide? Um, yeah, I've got some. I have, like, a lot of time in Vermintide too. A lot of time. Over a thousand hours kind of time. Um, like, meme builds and cataclysm because I want to challenge myself kind of time. And, um, when Dark Tide came out, and I was super excited for it because I played Vermintide 2 so much, and based on everything that happened in Vermintide 2, I was really excited considering, like, oh, Fat Shark, the, the devs. Fat Shark, like, they really must have learned a lot because of all the changes that they've been doing, and they're trying to do this and that with character builds, and, like, they added a cash shop, but it was years after the fact, and it used real currency, but also there's earnable stuff in-game. It's like, oh, this is pretty neat, you know? Um, and then Dark Tide comes out, and it was kind of, it, it was shit when it came out, and I was really, really disappointed. Uh, and then I came back a couple years later, and I played it, and I was like, oh, this is better, but it's still like, eh, it's so-so. Um, I would recommend Vermintide 2 way before Dark Tide, honestly. But I think it's really disappointing. I think they could have done a whole lot better with it. And I'm probably not going to play it again. Maybe. But, yeah. Pretty, pretty disappointing. Um, it's probably going to be, like, my go-to example for when a game um, swaps established and defined characters with everybody just making their own characters and customizing them. Because... Vermintide 2 had Barden Gorkson, Sienna Fuegonassis, um, we had uh, Carillion, Marcus Kruber, and Victor Saltspire. So you had five characters who were all very different in terms of their personality, their aesthetic, uh, their, you know, their, their attitudes towards everybody else in the party. And so as they bantered and talked, and y you could learn a lot about them and who they were, and you got to really like them. And I think we lost a great deal by replacing established characters in a game with every player just makes up their own convict and that's who you play as. Um, so that's kind of meh. And also there's the other gameplay stuff and it just, it's fine, but... Uh, I expect, I expected a whole lot better. All right. Oh, well. <clears throat> what does touching the portal tell you? Best case scenario, how it feels, and maybe temperature? Worst case scenario, death or portal implosion? I mean, yeah. Uh... <laughs> but we need the movie to happen. Yeah. We do need the movie to happen. Do you think Beyond the Spider-Verse will answer how incursions happen in the MCU? Across the Spider-Verse seem to hint a lot to it. No, no, I don't think that they have anything to do with each other. I don't think that what we see in Across the Spider-Verse is meant to be the same as Incursions in the MCU, because yeah, they're different studios. 
I, I just don't think that there's there's that much collaboration in terms of storytelling. No. I think that thinking that is um I could the best that I could basically the way that I would view it is that whatever is going on in like a Sony produced Spider Man thing, which is all of them, I, I guess what I mean is like not in any way, you know, with a clear connection to Marvel Studios, anything that happens in them could influence other things that Sony does at Spider Man, so even to the games, but not the MCU. I don't think they have anything to do with each other. Nostalgia critic of old people had a pretty funny skit about the Coen brothers' Garfield. Fair enough. I'm sure he's made funny skits. Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> well, like Melvin? I'm... Melvin, brother the Joker, is pretty funny. <laughs> it is funny. <laughs> One of the better ones. Good stuff. Um, I, J. Longbone and High Wags. Oh, hello. The Rotten Tomatoes score for this movie is super sus. No way the audience score is that high. No, I don't buy it either. I mean, there wasn't much of an audience in the first place. Huh. But... Um, I remember Nick Fury, he was in the MCU. Yeah, yeah, he was in the MCU apparently at some mm. point. I don't know when he, he left exactly. I think he got snapped and he never came back. I think what they should do is in the post credit scene, they, they should just have Nick Fury talking with people to just remind us that Nick Fury's still around, you know? Let's draw some connections. So if that's how the switch works, then Captain could have solved the movie by telling Miss Marvel and Monica to not use their powers since she could 1v1. Yeah, she could dominate. Uh, yeah, and, and I mean, the, I, you know, it's clear that the film understands, wait, how do we justify bringing... Kamala on this adventure, and they're just like, oh, well, you know, we need her around, and it's like, no, you don't. Just tell her not to use her powers. Yep, that's literally all you Which have to do. Which is easy, because it's, it's not like her powers are passive. They're very active. They are, you need to, like, make something. You need to create a construct. Whereas, like, Carol can't even, you know, like, she, flying is, is using her abilities, right? Like, any there were just like a number it, and and she's the most powerful and most experienced one there was no reason for the film to be what it was I, I don't even know why they went with the whole switching like it's such a bizarre premise to me your powers are such that when you use them at the same time you switch your places it's such a weird idea for a film it's strange it's an odd one mm. It is also the original Modern Warfare 3 day. God bless. Uh, uh might have been. Probably. Modern Warfare uh, 3. Call of Duty tends uh, to come out in game. November. Modern Warfare 3 was a crazy game. It's kind of funny. I feel like Modern Warfare 3... No, I don't even feel... I know it has a, w a worse reputation than 2, but, like, the multiplayer was more balanced. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, uh, I think yeah, a lot when of people... It worked. The, the famous thing I remember on the first weeks of release that all me and my friends, the netcode and the spawns were awful on Modern Warfare 3. Uh, that's the thing. I was, uh, I was playing Battlefield 3 when I, when I was coming out. I got Modern yep. Warfare 3 a bit later. It was like spawn camping and spawn kills everywhere in Modern Warfare 3 at the beginning. I don't mm. know how they fucked that up. I never understand. Modern Warfare 2. Call of Duty. They didn't learn from Modern Warfare 2. That shit was Because Modern Warfare 2 had a lot of... Yeah, I love Modern Warfare 2, but like that multiplayer was insanely um, unbalanced, imbalanced. Like, goddamn, like, fucking, I remember, I remember that it was, like, the longer that the game went on, the more it started to devolve, um, to where, yeah, you know, months before yeah. Black Ops came out, the common thing on Terminal was people would just get up on that, uh, that central part, as like, across from the cockpit of the plane, that had a view of the entire outside, as well as the whole way into the spawns, Snipe. uh, on the different sides. Well, what yeah, they did had cover. It had the AC grenade launcher so cover too. Right. So it was. So like, they just grenade launcher one man army. So they just keep shooting grenade launchers down, and then one man army to get their grenade. <laughs> hey, grenade don't forget launchers back. <laughs> their package and commando. Okay, the best combo. Oh, commando, commando, was... commando pro. Yeah, commando. Yeah, pro commando pro, pro was insane. Longer. It was. It was legitimately nuts. Yeah, and that death game. Traits. That game. That game caught us. <laughs> But like that, that game taught us a lot about how not to design a multiplayer <laughs> game. Like, yeah, oh I mean, yeah, I your, your kill streaks, your shit. kill streaks help you get more kill streaks. So the rich get richer, and it's really easy for that to happen. And between and the one man army, the commando pro, and then just the fact that the time to kill was super low, guns were super accurate, 
you had heartbeat sensors on your guns. You had mm. extremely deadly noob tubes, the ability to replenish those things. You, it was nuts. Man, that was a mega cancer well. game. And um, I remember it was uh, it was um, Modern Warfare Three introduced the three different um, I don't know why they don't fucking talk to each other like the developers, um, because Black Ops like the the COD points like that system where you could just Everyone unlock whichever one you wanted. Yeah. You didn't yep. need to go through the linear progression. You could unlock the you, perks and the weapons you wanted. That was way well, better. You unlocked the ability to buy weapons as you leveled up, but once you had a weapon unlocked you could buy it with COD points, as well as the attachments, the reticles, yeah. the reticle colors, instead all of, of it, that. Instead of it being like, well, you gotta unlock all this shit that you don't want to use, yeah. and then... You gotta go through the 16 get attachments the to get the one. To... And then I remember um, Black Ops 2 had the Pit 10 system that, that Infinity Ward seemed to be like completely resistant to using, which I also really liked Pit 10. That, yeah, that was the like brief time I played those versatile. games, I was like, oh yeah, I could mix and match with my with my perks and grenades. Like, if I want to have more grenades at the expense of less perks, or Or if you want to have, you know, like only one primary weapon with way more attachments instead of a secondary. That Like, that flexibility was cool, and then it was like, it was but neat. they didn't... And I remember it was uh, the reason why I was thinking about that was because Modern Warfare Three had the three different uh, kill streaks. So there was the the kill streaks. It it, it was uh, or score streaks, I think, because I had the assault yes, and the support thing. and specialist. I think assault was like all the fun ones, right? It was like where the the uh, attack helicopter and AC one thirty and stuff was, and then support was more like team oriented things yeah, like it was uh, counter UAVs. UAVs and UAVs and things mm -hmm. like that. And then specialist, I think, was you unlocked additional perks. Yeah, so like as you got, got kills streak, and points, perks. you would get more and more perks. Yeah, that was a good idea. That was a fucking it good idea. Yeah, they should have kept was, doing that, but then they didn't because they don't fucking talk to each other <laughs> when they're making these games. I think, or, or rather, it was because I don't know, inf like either Infinity Ward and Treyarch alternating depending on when they were becoming the more favored studio were too arrogant to do what the other team had done. Yeah, I don't know what their, what their, I guess, conversations, if they existed, kind of looked like. If they were all just sort of told to do their own thing to keep them decently distinct, um, or, or, or what I'm not sure, on, really. I don't know. I know that a lot of the Call of Duty stuff, and the reason I got out of it, it got me to really appreciate the relatively more, like, in a way, the more simple battlefield, where here's your class, you can choose from these weapons. Like, here's your, make a kit and then go out and get them, you know? It mm -hmm. was so much more simple, and it felt so much better. Uh, it just wasn't as crazy and unhinged. Well, that's, that's like, Call of Duty's success was essentially, it was a crazy dopamine, um, like, game. Everything about it is designed to give you dopamine hits that get you really excited. The sounds that, even down to the sounds that, uh, like, the hit detector sound, where it's like, like, it makes yeah. really, like, really sort of nice, satisfying, punchy sound, and then, boom, like, oh, you got 100 points, and then the guitar music, you, you know, the guitar riff that they would play when you level up. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's just so many loud sounds and flashy lights and everything to just be like, yeah, It was the yeah, meme before awesome. it was a meme. Right? Pretty like much. It's the thing that people had to kind of catch up on to. Well, it's the it's, thing it's... that a lot of other games started doing. When Halo started implementing, Halo 4 had it, where if you got a kill, instead of it just being like, well, you saw that you got a kill, so why would we need to tell you that you got one? Um, other than, like, the little thing in the, the bottom right-hand corner, left-hand corner of the screen that was just saying what was happening. But then Halo 4 is like, oh, you got a kill, you got a headshot, like, all popping up in the center of the screen. You That's when get, it started like, to get obnoxious. To get the announcer to, you know... So well, yeah, you, you had to get, like, a double kill trip. You had to actually do something impressive, whereas yeah. instead it's just like, you got a kill, here you go, and it's like, dude, come on. <laughs> Let's chill yeah, out a little bit. Yeah, I remember bit. the simple days are like, Bad Company 2, um, a game Whoa, that I love, yeah. where it's like, yep. when you got a kill, there'd be like, a, you know, soldier killed 50 at the bottom, and it'd be like, mm -hmm. yep, you did it, good job, keep going. But that was really it. It was so much more subtle by comparison, and even, you know, even now in its current state, when you play... A modern battlefield game so like 1-5 and 2042 it's a lot more it's more noticeable but it's still not like crazy in your face but there is that element of like it does feel really good when you blow up a tank and it's got like four people in it and you get you know all the things pop up yeah, and big numbers pop up and it's like screen. yeah but that's the thing is that it, it the the idea should be that you get those sorts of things when you've actually accomplished something great rather than you got a kill, 
and you got it on a guy who just killed you even though you probably didn't even know that so here's extra points and extra things that pop up on screen to tell you how awesome you are Maria Hill had scenes filmed for this movie that were cut, so I think it originally was set before Secret Invasion. Oh, there's there's a lot that's been cut that we now can tell Who from the knows? Marvels. Like, yeah, with the well, it seems like they cut out the entire third act and changed it completely. Because uh, there's like so behind good. the scenes stuff that just isn't in the film, which is weird that they even released it because it's like very obviously not in the film. It's um. It's funny that they would have, you know, it's gotten so bad that I would half expect them to just have a fucking scene where Maria Hill talks to Fury and they're just like, eh, fuck it. Fuck it, whatever. she's supposed to be dead, it's like, <laughs> shut up. Yeah, but this was set before or something. Okay, whatever. Hope you guys are okay, love what you guys are doing. Well, uh, you're all hey, right as well. Yeah, I'm, all, I'm doing, doing all right. right. Yeah, things are okay over here. Darben's shoulders are the roof of a house and her head is the chimney. Try on seeing that now. I mean, yeah, her shoulders were like absurd, weird... so I don't know what they were doing with that. The whole character yeah, was it's... absurd. I don't know. Yeah, it... I don't know like, why they thought that that was a good dark idea. Dark Daenerys kind of looking thing. It's. I don't even know why they wouldn't have. Uh, I don't know why they wouldn't have gone for like an actual Captain Marvel villain, like a real one as well. That's something I find weird. Like, why wasn't Moonstone? That just seems to. But I guess I like. Yeah, we need Dar Ben. Just, just some Dar rando. Ben is really <laughs> good. Uh, Gen V uses a Wilhelm scream for a victim during a college terrorist attack. It's more than just bad writing, it's cringe and tonally flumed. Hi, Rags. That's... Hello. That's not where I would use a Wilhelm mm, scream that, ever. Yeah, that's that's um, not smart. They'd use, a, they'd use one in The Hobbit, too. Yeah. Well, yeah, but I mean, yeah. if you use a Wilhelm scream in a situation where it's kind of goofy, not like a serious moment... I don't think it, it wasn't goofy in the Hobbit movie. They they used it in what was supposed to. be I can't a remember when movie. did they when did they. What was, what was the scene? It was an extended scene in um, Desolation of Smaug. It's when uh, Thorin's father dies at Dol Guldur. Um, he's with Gandalf, and Sauron is in this. He's got his black flump, and he's in the big thing, and Sauron's like. You know, I will, your light has no power here. I am the ultimate darkness. And it looks like kind of, it's like pretty imposing. And Gandalf's there and he's like, oh, you stay away. And uh, Thorin's father, not Thror, um, but his, Doran, uh, uh, Thorin's father's behind him. And like, he, he's, he's like, oh my God, tell my son that I love him. And Gandalf's like, you shall tell him yourself. And then Sauron like reaches in and grabs Thorin's dad and pulls him in and kills him. And we get the Wilhelm scream. And it's like, oh, that was, you were like going for like a serious kind of moment there. And then you did the Wilhelm scream. So that's kind of fucked up. Because I, don't, I don't know if it's, I, I feel like it is such a, a prevalent thing that regular moviegoers recognize just like, oh, that's like the scream that I've heard in other films. And it's like, it, it is just a thing that reminds you, oh, I'm watching a film, basically, every time you hear yeah, it. Yeah, kind of. I'm watching yeah. a film, and this is like a film Easter egg it's thing. It's a film meme, yeah. Wait, I try to avoid having my main character have a Wilhelm scream, or a character that's significant, too, because... Uh... Well, usually, it's just be like some random, random goon guy. or something, yeah. 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 Um, admit it, this is kind of content that creates a cult classic. No. 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 Um... But the Marvels... <laughs> I don't it, cre it might create a cult, but not not a cult classic. No. Uh, watch the Boogie Two Nine Eight Eight documentary. You can tell how much learned helplessness he's cultivated over the years, even after the creator clash. Depressing. Um, it works. I, that's just. Uh, I guess. Or at least it worked a lot for him, but it just doesn't work well, on the internet because uh, people it, remember. No, uh, yeah, that's the thing. It's it's like there's a playbook that he had that used to work a lot because he was perceived as, like, the jolly fat man who tries to help people because his life was so hard and he doesn't want them to make the same mistakes. But when you keep doing it again and again and again, and you just start coming across as more of a slimy fucking person, Sick then, weirdo, yeah, yeah, it no longer works. Yeah. Uh, Muller, I had no idea you could tank a shotgun shot in Amnesia the Bunker. Insane. Never seen anyone have such a lengthy fight with Le Frenchman. Yeah, well, and it's funny, too, because I figured that he was, like, supernatural and invincible, but one shot to the head and you can kill him. Um, I was like, oh, okay, I guess I'll do that. 
The Annihilator hates being called that for annihilating, indeed. Yeah, she says, uh, I, it's so weird, right? To have the trauma of having basically annihilated your entire home world, but not really your home world, but kind of is, because those are the memories you still have, and there's people on there who are just as tricked as you were, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And you, yeah, you look at the damage you did, the amount of people who would have died, the civilization you've destroyed, all because you were lied to and you were kidnapped. There's a lot of trauma there is what I'm getting at. And so when someone says, the Annihilator to you, referencing all of that, your reaction really shouldn't be, I don't like that name. It yeah, well, like it, it, doesn't, it, it doesn't address that you earned it. You did. You annihilated that, this just, civilization. Imagine how it would make you feel. You don't say that back. You say, like, I don't even but know. But that you say it makes you a little bit cranky. That's how it comes across. Yeah, she's, she's like, go, oh, don't call me that. I myself just chucked a grenade at him once and found out he's a camping camps in the corner, work like a charm. I took away the Frenchman's one OP move, retreat. Yeah, because that just shoot him in the head. I mean, it's, most people probably have bullets at that point still. Are we supposed to believe the Civil War was happening during Guardians of the Galaxy 1 when the Nova Corps called the Kree government to deal with Ronan? Uh, Guardians, I think, takes place in 2014 in the timeline, and 2 as well. Where Civil War is 2016. I think they're asking. I think when they say civil war, they're talking about the Kree versus. Oh, during the Kree. Uh, well, that would have been Captain Marvel. Would that was like in the nineties, right? That was when she went and destroyed the Kree, wasn't it? Because that's when the remember now. Set. That's when the first movie was set in the mid nineties. So I think she went right back and destroyed it, right? I thought that. Yeah, I think that's what we're supposed to think. So, I think, because it's meant to be that she basically, this is what's happened to the society after, like, decades of fighting. That she destroyed the Supreme Intelligence, that kicked off the war. Oh, and then, but that would have been happening while Guardians was happening, yeah. And, um, and Ronan is, uh, he's Kree, so I guess he had no perspective on that. Well, it just didn't come up, because it didn't happen at that point. No, it was something that was made up after. It's, Jesus. Yeah, it's always <laughs> so shit. <laughs> Uh, also, with <laughs> endgame great, rules, great cinematic universe. with endgame rules, shouldn't the blip have saved Hala? Um, it wouldn't oh, have made the atmosphere would have, uh, any like, less poison or anything, right? I guess it would have completely changed the nature of the war, though. If half of the people disappeared, and there'd be yeah, half probably. of the consumption of the resources. But that's the problem: is that the blip is just this thing that happens in the middle of the timeline that they don't want you to think about anymore. Yeah. But like. Every single character that you meet, every new character and every set of events that is said to have been taking place over the last however many years, 50% of those people didn't exist for five years. Are they? I think they think they've just taken care of it. They've accounted I for do. it. They referenced yeah. it a couple times in movies. Every once in a while, we might mention that it happened. And you know what? Done. Yeah, that's how they feel. It's done. Uh, if there's no EFAP next week, this is the last one for me for seven weeks because of Air Force basic training, so if not, I'll see you all mid-January. Good luck! Have fun okay. flying those planes! I think he sent that more than one time, but we've also yeah, got his return message, so... Yeah, that's <laughs> true, he made it back. He did. It's like, you know what? Now I've learned all the things. You are a superior human now. Yeah, welcome back. Uh, so I was gonna see this last night. But my roommate, my roommate is having a cancer scare, heading to theater to watch the shit show now. Hopefully you're still going when it's over. Can I get a fuck you cancer? Oh yeah, fuck, fuck you, cancer. you cancer. Yeah, I hope everything turns out okay. Absolutely. Cancer's a bitch. And it feels like a bit of an unfair one to throw on Earth, you know? It's like, why do we have, why, can't we just not have that one? It's, just, it's so you'd appreciate not having cancer, Molly. Oh. <sighs> Imagine buying 20th Century Fox and wasting it. Oh, dude, they had so many IPs they can use, but then the second they use them, <laughs> it's all terrible anyway. Mm, yeah. Guys, the planet told her to smile. What follows is in continuity with previous exchanges. Oh, yeah, I mean, if the planet told her to smile, then she can destroy it. I think that's fair. I think that's fair, too. Returning the violence. If you teleport with whoever and whatever you're grabbing, couldn't Monica go into space with a suit, wait for Carol to grab the lady, and then teleport her into space, killing the villain super easily? So your problem is you're thinking about how the rules might be working here. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't think about that. This is not the place. Why do you hate superhero movies? This is unacceptable. It's just funny, because Carol could insta-kill the boss throughout the entire movie. They just avoid addressing that until the end where she does that. 
Well, one of the things that they like to keep doing in the film is they always have her either grab onto the band or fire the laser at the band when, I mean, there's so many places, like, if you aimed for her legs, what's she going to do? Is she going to lean down? Just punch her. <laughs> Don't use any of those powers, just use physical. Punch her. Uh, well, yeah, she can do that, but then the problem is that the film keeps making her grab the fucking thing. She yeah. keeps grabbing it. Marvel's Mr. Khan, the only action figure worth collecting. Mr. Oh, Khan. Oh, the family. The dad? The, the family. Well, they said Kamala's Mr. Khan family. specifically. Yeah. Oh, I guess. Okay. Uh, yeah, he seemed alright. I mean, the, it's kind of, like funny because um in the miss marvel show the mum is probably the best character in that and i feel mm. like she's probably the best character in um the marvels as well because everybody else is a goober <laughs> like she's yeah pretty i normal. think the family is three is pretty normal people yeah and mm. i don't think there's really much that you know she or them really do wrong so, question. If the rule that they have to use their powers at the same time didn't exist, would the film be any more coherent? I guess slightly, because oh, the rule... It, it seems it was... to be that they're... They don't seem to be using it consistently, and the rules oh, are kind of changing on it, so it does add a level of incoherency to it. Well, the thing is, is that if it was random, it would just start becoming insanely convenient that it yeah. keeps happening at times that either make for more drama or save the day. But yeah, the fact that it's random would be incoherent too. So. I think it would just create different kinds of problems because the problem that it has now is it just doesn't, it, it doesn't make I they, mean, they yeah, don't it's semi-accurate rules are, I guess, more coherent than completely at random, and so. Randomness, Maybe yeah. technically. But can Goose be our wingman? I get it. Yeah. Um, I was working. I don't get it. What do you mean? Oh, do you, you haven't seen Top Gun then? Oh no, I haven't. Okay, uh, Top Gun reference. Ah. Um, I was working at the theaters on Friday, and there was a 3D The Marvels that was completely empty. Oof! And my largest was 16 in a room, fitting 250. Mm. I think mine was empty. I can't remember. It might. It was either empty or maybe there was like one person there. <laughs> I think there was only one person <laughs> in my theater. What a sad day for the Marvel thing. Does the mm -hmm. bangles make you walk like an Egyptian? You'd hope so. Be cool. Be the best part of the movie. Da, 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 da. Norway has a space launch facility in the north for polar orbits. The main thing is to not have pollu pollulated areas nearby. Populate populated. I assume that's that is true, though. Uh, when you do your launches, I think that's why, like in America, they send it, you know, from Florida over the ocean. They don't uh, want well, to send it it's, over. It's, uh, it's areas. a variety of factors. On the one hand, the closer you can get to the equator, the better. It's why everything in America happens in Texas or Florida, or why, um, like a lot of European stuff, I think, goes from uh, from South America. I can't remember the name, but it's one of the French. It's like French. Uh, territory. They do a lot of theirs there. And then, of course, over the ocean because shit's gonna drop or it could explode. And you would much rather have that happen in over the ocean than above land. Uh, I guess it would be maybe in relation to the, the idea of the space elevator. Like, that there was a space elevator going to uh, right. uh, Sabre that was in, like, New York, which... I mean, you know, it's science fiction, right? In science fiction, you can find ways to have, I don't know, like, find some kind of system to have a space elevator that isn't above the equator. Uh, obviously, they provide no explanation in, in the Marvel, so... You yeah, just it's just sort of a thing that's there. It seems like it kind of... It stands out as being particularly like, oh, can we do this? Is that a well, thing that we Well, especially in the did? Marvel world, that's a huge development, right? We've gone from... The helicarrier was the most impressive, like, piece of technology, human technology, and now it's at a point... It's, it's kind of like the worst of both worlds. On the one hand, the, uh, uh, like, Saber is incredibly impressive, but on the other hand, this is the Marvel Universe, where there should have been an amount of collaboration between Earth and other, like, alien worlds, to where Saber really shouldn't even be that impressive at all. They even did this in the, um, the Independence Day remake, or the, the sequel... They had all the oh, humans, had all the energy yeah, guns from the, the alien, alien technology. technology. Which, um, yeah, that, that, I mean, 
so many people died though like there's no way that humanity would have recovered like that in the span of only you know a couple no. decades uh springy's from the nor dimension no no i'm not oh all right fair enough i had the nor dimension that was from uh that was from miss marvel that didn't even get brought up <laughs> didn't even get brought up in this film Animal fact. Herbivores don't exist. Everything believed to be one consume meat regularly. 99% of them go out of their way to get it and prefer it to live. I don't believe you. I don't believe you. I know yeah, that I there are certain circumstances where an herbivore will eat another animal, but those are... I don't believe like those are grass is because they have their four stomachs, like the ruminant thing. That's why they eat the grass, because they can actually, they're evolved in such a way that they're uniquely predisposed to digesting it. Because I've seen, like, I've, I've seen a deer munching on a snake and a squirrel munching on a bird, but, like, those are the, the those are, I think, special cases. Um, it's not like, that's what, oh, that's just pandas, not what they Pandas just eat bamboo, right? Like, for instance, that's all they eat. Yeah. Koalas just eat eucalyptus. Yeah, like I, yeah, I just don't believe that. <laughs> like that doesn't that doesn't sound right to me at all. Because we have the category omnivore for animals that eat meat and uh, plants. So yeah. yeah, that just sounds absurd. That there's no herbivores. Ratchet and Clank made take resources and pieces of the planet make more sense. The planets would lose celestial balance, so to speak, and spiral into the sun. Yes, Chairman Drax's plan was he was creating a new planet by just ripping chunks out of other planets, and like he said, you know, this will cause the unfortunate side effect of your planet spiraling into the sun, but sacrifices must be made. And his whole plan was he was going to create new planets, sell a bunch of real estate on it, and then destroy those planets, and then build new planets to repeat the cycle. Chairman Drax, he was a bad man. Just... What a jerk. Uh, just saw Remember Me in Season 1 of Angel. I liked it a lot. Do you remember that one, Fringy? Uh, no, I... Uh... Damn it. No, I don't think I do exactly. It relates to time getting reset at the end. I think any more might be a bit spoilery. I think I know what I... No, yeah, I, I know. I know what that one is. Yeah. Quite a sad one. That is a sad episode. Uh, Rip Maria Brambo. Oh yeah, I guess she's, oh, yeah, well, she's dead. She died. She died a long time in One Division. Yeah. Rags, Black Girl Magic. <gasps> uh, wow. Momentum, a function of mass and velocity, is conserved between portals. In layman's terms, speedy thing goes in, speedy thing comes out. <sighs> Are they referring to the part where, uh, when they were falling down to Earth, and then yeah, they probably. switched like They just landed. Even totally though they established fine. the opposite several times, but oh well. Yeah. Also, what was what was Carol doing? What the fuck was she doing? Don't know. That she was right there in front of a bunch of bad guys. I love this movie. I especially love the part where Dark Helmet goes to ludicrous speed to catch Captain Marvel, but got stopped by Black Girl Magic. Yep. I mean, Spaceballs makes more sense. It has, like, better structural writing for story than most of the new Marvel movies now. So it is just funny to think about. I guess that shouldn't take away from the fact that most comedies do have, like, great comedies have really good story writing as well, because <laughs> it's, like, valuable. Do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was too greedy in the shoulder room. Well, yeah. yeah, definitely. Those shoulders are peak fire. Doesn't he say <laughs> using both bands together is safer? Yes, he he says you'll have more control with with just one band. It's less, it's, it isn't as easy to control. Except but when she uses, it blows her off. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> with relativity, especially with close to light speed movement, events happening at the same time isn't a thing. Except except in the small reference, except in the same reference frame. Sorry, I'm not sure what's uh, really I mean, uh, I'm guessing it would be to do with the idea of events happening. You know, planets like solar systems apart that the idea that the time would be running at the same time is like well would it though because of relativity i see you remember in interstellar how like when they were with the black hole that the time was moving dramatically uh faster right i yeah, know oh, isn't it up to you at that point as a sci-fi writer to say yeah well they're the same in yeah, these two places 
Also, I'll be right back. The way you described the cutoff between character development and the plot reminds me of Quantum Mania. Did we ever get any resolution on Monica's resentment for Carol? Because that was a nuanced development set up back in WandaVision I actually liked. Nope. They just, uh, they establish they've got an issue and then it gets solved. Do you remember they, they have that meeting in the cornfield and it mostly just, they're just like, eh. Um, if you look at the trailer, there are scenes we didn't see with them arguing. I assume there was more to it and it got cut. Um, I'm not sure I understand how this sort of stuff happens. You'd think that if you're going to cut stuff, it wouldn't be the character payoffs, but, you know, what are you going to do? Um, every time I saw Darban give a speech without the heroes attacking is the perfect definition of if the character is not on screen, they are on pause. Yeah. Like I said, she was easy to defeat throughout the whole film. But a lot of people just aren't allowed to do what they normally do. Hello, EFAP gang. Hello. I Hi. sent in a super chat some time ago about my dog. Her health is much improved. Just wanted to pass along some oh. good news among the Marvel sludge. Very good glad stuff. to hear that. Happy to hear it. Also, happy Veterans Day. Hi, Rags. Hello. Is Darben's shoulders the shoulders of the MCU the guy from last week was talking about? Perhaps. They managed to make it into an actual shoulder, shoulder piece. It's beautiful. Dear Rags, Mola, Nutsa, and especially Fringy, I hope you all have a grand Thanksgiving. Please review a cool movie that you enjoy. Well, we did, Name uh... a cool movie that we enjoy? No, they said please review one. But we did, oh, we did okay. Um, okay. Uh, Troy. That's a cool movie. Yeah, that's neat. I like Troy. There you go. Troy was fun. Troy, Troy was fun. Um, all right, just got home from work. I can only imagine all the crispitism that's already been gone over, hoping for a long boy. Yeah, how, did, how long did it go? Like five hours, the Marvels one? It wasn't as bad as Quantumania, but only probably because of the fact that it was shortened to two hours, that film, at maximum. It was less than that, right? 18 minutes, was it? Wait, what? Uh, how long was the Marvels? How long was the Marvels? Uh, I think it was an hour and a half. Too yeah. long. Obviously, think, too yeah, long I think I was thinking it was mercifully short. Uh, Kurzgesagt's Earth vid shows how unique Earth is. Billions of years of specific chemical reactions to make it the life supporting planet it is today. Pretty neat, isn't it? Mm hmm. Yeah, we are, we are very fortunate. Um,. But in the MCU, almost every planet and other universe is occupied by oxygen-breathing humans. Cool, Disney. Really cool. I'll also play DDLC, Dumbos. Yep, it's boring. Well, yeah, they've not... They, they, they clearly didn't even want to explore, like, doing interesting things with how the world would have... It's, like, generic. It's just like, yeah, they're just there. And they, they're a well, different color. I, mean, I guess the funny thing is, they could probably get away with making all the planets Earth-like, but not having them all be human beings. But they're all humans. They're just humans. Well, mm -hmm. they're humans but blue. It's so lame. Who smiles less in their own movie? Man of Steel or Plank of Wood? Hmm. I think, uh, I think Captain Marvel smiles a few times in, in this movie. Yeah, just Man find a scene where she's with her friends times, or whatever. Right? She'll smile in those. Mm-hmm. Man of Steel, he doesn't have any reason to smile. It's like smiling with like a, like, well, he sees, I don't know, he probably is like, yo, I like you. Um, I'm mom, even though I'm going to call myself Kal-El, but I don't know. Also, Salutations K9 named after a used piece of cloth. That, I guess it's me. You don't have to use the piece of cloth for it to be a rag. That is true. There has to be more than one of them, though. There are, like, at least 1,000 gates. How does adding three gates affect it? Like, with 1,000, that's an increase of a 0.3%. And I think, that's assuming that there's only 1,000. I thought their logic was that it's not necessarily the number, it's just that creating them in places that are unstable or with an unstable creation, right? Like, with one um, they, they change. They go back and forth in the film. I think it's that, but also the number. Right. Howdy, Massives. Played Dark Descent for the first time last month, and other than falling through the map at one point, it was great rat. Still need to play the not-horror game. Looking forward to it. Yeah, Fringy, you're doing Dark Descent this Halloween, right? Uh, I suppose I might. That'll be fun. Rags, are you gonna play The Bunker this Halloween? Maybe. I might. I don't know. if Maybe if, uh, because it's still a, way, uh, a while away, maybe there will be a game that comes out that we all want to take a look at. 
and do an EFAP on. But I, I don't want to call it yet because it's still a long way to Halloween. Well, I mean, it's mostly just you should just play it anyway because it's good. Oh, is it? Okay. The bonker. Le bunker. Should have done a cat scan of the eggs. Well, they they super future. They could have done anything. They they would have found out everything they needed to know. But fuck it, you know. Or they should have maybe brought up like, oh, we don't know what they are. We you, the impenetrable the scans and stuff like that. Which is like, oh, I don't know if I believe you, but like whatever. <sighs> At least you're you know. So. Rags, Risk of Rain one just got a remake. Try it. Which remake? Sorry. Rags, Risk of Rain one just got a remake. Try it. I might. I really like Risk of Rain two, but I never played the first one. Hmm. Uh, as someone who loves dancing very energetically at clubs, I was genuinely insulted at how exhausted Monica looked after doing almost nothing. Maybe she did a lot and it got cut because, yeah, she does a little grandma like back and forth, and then she's like catching her breath, <laughs> and it's like, what the hell happened? <laughs> like, she's also an energy person. She's like not a person person. I don't, does she get tired? I don't know. I guess so. I don't know how it works. Humanity Lost has no humanoid aliens. It's cool. Hi, Frog. Oh, I hi. I think they're making the same commentary, yeah. <laughs> when, uh, why my daughter just called saying the same thing you guys were saying about the genocide? She's graduating from cine cine cinema sinning to full-on Mola-induced rages. Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, it's only natural. <laughs> Captain Marvel used black girl magic. It's super effective. Captain Marvel won the argument. Yes, she did. Stat Statue of Liberty no longer has Cap Cap's America shield. Did it not get knocked off during No Way Home? It did, but you figure that they would just put it back up, but I guess I they know. just decided, ah, oh, fuck it, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Lurkins are now literally exactly like Kirby. It's uh, really fun and yeah. cute and great, okay? Uh, that's a really great idea, the, mm -hmm. the Flurkins. That was like a really good idea that we needed to have a lot more of in this film. Look, it's a cat, but it's a fucking alien. PSA, don't keep watching new Marvel movies, poop. Watch Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. instead. Tasty. I was never t that tempted by Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Me either. Did you watch any of it? No, I haven't seen any. And it's seven seasons, so it's, it's long. Yes, it is. All the comments on Facebook for this movie are cringe. Well, <laughs> I can't even tell which ones are real. I know that there's uh, an attempt, like the, the Rotten Tomatoes stuff and the the efforts from Marvel to try and move past this, but also make it seem like it is worthwhile because ultimately they've spent a bazillion dollars on it. It's like, oof. Not yeah, looking out. Funny. IRL, there's brain disorder and it prevents speech, but not singing. Oh, you mean like there's a thing that can make it so that you can't speak but you can sing? Really? Yeah, I guess that whole planet had that mental disorder. <laughs> uh, I can believe it. There's the, the there's the brain view, right? Like in terms of you can have such fuck ups that you know re revert oh, your memory. Oh, so that addresses or... the Puss in Boots uh, argument then with Pinocchio or something that when he sings, that's what's happening in his brain. It's not registering his speech. Well, so he wasn't lying. I don't know if we... I think they're just talking about the singing planet on Captain Marvel. Oh, I, I know they are. I'm just saying that it applies here with, with Pinocchio. Maybe he's got that. What a bizarre choice of the singing planet. Just thinking about it. Yeah. Damn. What a... Mm -hmm. What an odd... They thought it was really funny. Thing. They did think it was funny. I guess they thought that would be hilarious for whatever reason. Crazy? I was crazy once. They locked me in a room. A room with Marvels. Marvels made me crazy. Crazy? I think they're losing their mind. I bet the sun's not even hot. It's all propaganda from Big Sun. You do wonder. You do wonder. I think it's just a big bulb. And when it goes dark, it's just the bulb, you know, fusing out and they gotta go switch it. Bruh, they ripped that sun ending from the all-star Superman in that Superman sacrifices himself to save the sun. Still silly, but at least Soup's died. Man. That ending is hilarious with uh, Captain Marvel. She could have done sure. it. She could have done it the whole time. That's what's so funny about that. That was definitely a reshoot. When the dying sun is brought up, I can't help but think they ripped off Pokemon where Necro Necrozma stole all the light from Ultra Megalopolis. Okay, Necrozma Pokemon. Yeah, that's yeah, I don't a recognize that one. Yeah, that's a that's a generation. 
seven. Ah, let me show you this. Part. Let me show you this. Uh, this edgy boy. Oh Let's my see. god. <laughs> you, did you see this lad? Did you see Necrozma? <laughs> He's so edgy. Look at <laughs> all those looks, edges. That, look, that looks like shit. <laughs> what that is that, that man? <laughs> From super That's not finished. Like he's you're like, so what is this? Like the concept for his some kind of weird helmet? <laughs> it's like no, this it's just, is him. That looks awful. Oh, uh, okay. Well, they copied him. Uh we gave them all a full dose of planet Cillin. Hey man, she did the right thing in the end and saved everybody, okay. If you did pop a few uh, painkillers, though, that would help out, probably, with the Civil War and everything. In All-Star Superman, doing what Captain Marvel did killed him. Yeah, but Captain Marvel's more powerful than Superman. She could take him. Mm -hmm. She could take almost everybody, except Gaia, and I guess Wanda. Yeah, I got. Hmm. I guess she loses to Wanda, right? Well, it's up to the writer at the time, whether or not that's the case. Because remember, uh, as long as Wanda's caught off guard, I guess she loses. That's I assume. Right, glass I cannon. Or, well, but I thought mm. she was a glass cannon, but she withstood like massive explosions <laughs> in a multiverse of she madness. She withstood lies. Please listen to Sakura Black and the Queef Secretions. I'm not listening to anything called the Queef Secretions. Yeah, I'll pass. That's all right, though. The story definitely starts with a lot of setup and ends with a conclusion. One of the movies of all time. Also, will Gaia use her powers to swap her? I mean, I guess it probably does have some setups, right? There are some, I guess, probably. Uh, Gaia wouldn't be involved because the reason they connect no, is because Captain Marvel touches the portal, Monica touches the portal, and then the bangles were made to create the portals, so they automatically get intertwined, which is why it's a problem that Darben doesn't Why wouldn't, get. uh... Oh, well, I guess, yeah, because I guess she just took it off. She wasn't wearing it. That's, I guess, the explanation, but that, just, that would just be a huge lucky coincidence at that point. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, the worst is Thor 4, turning one of your best heroes into a complete idiot and mocking male victims of sexual assault with that disgusting flick scene. Um, as the worst, I mean, even if you're going by individual scenes, we've got, we've got a heavy set of contenders. Like, this, we're talking about a huge Olympic Games in terms of the worst moment in, like, all of the MCU. Mm, there's a lot of picks. You, you pick that, but it's like, I mean, I'm not even saying this is the worst, but I feel like that's defeated already just by the Black Widows burying the prison in snow, you know? Like, I feel like that's worse. It's like, what? what yeah, assassinate I... four characters at once. Yeah, that's pretty three. bad. Um, but I think the number one moment would probably be something to do with the blip, I'm, I'm assuming. Yeah, something endgame related. Probably. Extinct animal of the day, Mylagaulis, the most metal of Mylagaulis. groundhogs. Gaulis. How do you spell that? Uh, just, I'm copy and pasting it into Google because it's <laughs> a lot of. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I got a, the result of a watch. That's probably not right. I don't. What? The extinct animal of the day is a watch? Yeah, I don't <laughs> know if that's true, but. I don't like those anymore. It's got a did you mean, and it's got some renderings here, so this is probably did you mean a... extinct gopher. Um, second, that's the best I can do in terms of assuming what this creature is. It looks kind of neat. He's got two big horns coming out of his snoot wow. there. Look at him go. Seems a little aggressive, but maybe this is a, just an unusual time for him, photo wise. I think he looks better than Necrozma. Mm -hmm. He does look better than Necrozma. I'd like a movie about this guy. Mm. Not stealing the sun or anything like that or whatever the fuck he does in Megalopolis. But just this guy going around being like, oh, man, I need to build a dam. Something, something you hate women, I guess. True. Probably, yeah. What do you think about the time oh, stone being green because Loki is the god of time? Trust the process, Kevin Feige. I, I can't even begin to take that seriously. It's, it's unbelievable. It really is. Like, the idea that everyone was praising that as some incredible thing. Like, oh, it makes so much sense because green is green. It's like, man, like, it really does seem like you guys discovered colors yesterday. Doesn't make any fucking sense anyway. It's like, oh, the reality stone's red because of Wanda. It's like, what are you talking about? 
What is happening? It's like he's the god of time now. He's reset everything, and he's the time stone. It's like, if it, if it, you could just keep running that logic all over the place. Why aren't all the stones green? Mm-hmm. Fuck you. <laughs> I'm not interested in this insane shit. We get all this crappy oh, writing for the characters Policy. and the world and the story and the plot, and then, and then it's just like, oh yeah, but this green... Like, that's, that's writing. <laughs> They're the same color. <sighs> Hey, I work at the cinema. We uh, have already stopped showing it. The Autism League had a private screening of the movie. No one else has seen it. The Marvels? Damn. Well, on the opening weekend, jeez. I don't know, maybe. Uh, farewell and adieu to you massive Fleamish massives. Farewell and adieu, you massive Fleamish of Fleams? Massives of Fleam? Fleeman and Fleeman. Who would you guys say are your FNT counterparts? Personally, I'd say Maul's is Gary, Rags is Ryan, or Az, and then I don't know about Fringy. I have no idea. I'm... I have to say, because I, I the dynamic is entirely different. <laughs> it's a different show. It's a very different yeah. show. It's a... Uh, yeah, counterpart. Well, like, I mean, I the, the main difference being that there's three hosts here, and there's, there's a lot more than three on that. That's right. We gotta so I'm not sure how I would uh, figure out who. Oh, well, I feel like who, is, you know? if one was to say like Maul is Gary, it's like because we're the hosts, I guess. That's the, the, the hosty <laughs> yeah. hosts. Like, you know, it's just like I don't know. There's not much. Of a... I feel like everyone's so different that to connect them would only be through like vague connections. Uh, it's remembering Sunday. Be careful. Be respectful. They meant remembrance. Yeah, yeah. I mean, of course. Mm -hmm. I think um, so. The Empire is never more alive than when we sleep. No sleeping, guys. Cover more negative reviews of Andor. Too many people sleep on Andor. Cough, Gary. Oh, yeah. Fuck them. I mean, true, but also, if you push too hard, you'll be seen as cringe and you'll do more damage to Andor than helping it. That's mm -hmm. right. You can't base, you can't make your identity just going against things. You gotta be able to, you know, talk about how things merits. But I'm sure we well, will sorry, talk more about Pico Andor. was right then. Yeah. You can't destroy what something love save the things you hate kiss. Well, I guess what Rags would have I said agree. to her is, why not both, though? Yeah, <laughs> but why not both? We have we, this, this is a war, woman. Well lead, Fringoid. Oh, well led, Fringoid. I think mm. they meant. Uh, meme, keep that oh, elbow thanks. moving. And uh, oops for meme and his cat. And the final message, I subscribed. Oh, thanks. Yeah, thanks for the subscription. Woo! Well, hopefully that answered your your inquisitive minds as regards to our coverage of the Marvels, and uh, we appreciate the kind messages and donations. We shall catch you guys in the next EFAP thing, whatever it may be. Bye, bye. Bye, everyone. Yeah, everybody. Bye, later. bye.